Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. Got a bit of a quiet slot this morning and uh, the weather's not too bad so I thought I'd give you an update on the pond that I built earlier this year. Uh, this is a bit of a follow on to uh, part one that I published um, several weeks ago now. So if you haven't seen that, I suggest maybe going and uh, having a look through because a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is uh, like a follow on uh, from that. It's not going to be a super long video this one, um, just like I say, a bit of an update. I'm going to go over some of the uh, issues that I've encountered, uh, tell you what's worked and what hasn't. Um, and uh, as ever, you know, if you've got any comments or ideas that can help me out, then uh, feel free to comment below. Uh, so uh, let's get on with it. So first off, the build of the pond, uh, the structure, the walls, windows, all that sort of thing, all holding up fine. It's got absolutely no major issues at all in that area. There have been a couple of things that have kind of surprised me a little bit with um, the pond, things that I hadn't really taken into account. Uh, one of the problems that I'm having is uh, birds coming down to drink at the pond, um, pigeons specifically or collared doves um, and wood pigeons as well that come and sit on the uh, coping and drink. Now that's not a problem and I don't mind it but they um, get droppings all over the place and poo down the side of the pond and on the surrounding area. Um, so um, as well as being a nuisance um, for obvious reasons, um, it has sort of degraded the coping slightly. So it's not as nice as when I first painted it and stuff. So um, I recently tried to put something in place to stop that and basically I've just stretched a piece of uh, fishing line around the pond and luckily I can do that here because uh, the support posts for the pergola uh, allow me to stretch it nicely around the two edges that they come in and land from. So I've put it about six inches up from the outside of the coping and used little screwing eyelets to run it through and the um, fishing line itself is a 100% fluorocarbon fishing line. Uh, it's 0.2 millimetres diameter and it's got a breaking strain of eight pounds. Just got it off Amazon, I think. And uh, it seems to do the job. It is really um, inconspicuous. So, so far, so good. It's been up for several days and I, I haven't noticed anything landing. There's no new droppings around the place. Uh, and I did actually see a collar dove like fly into it and, and, and abort its landing. Um, so, so fingers crossed they don't work out a way to get around it. And also I, I haven't seen any herons or um, had any fish losses uh, from that. So, um, but I'm hoping that potentially that could dissuade a heron if it did get one as well. Um, I haven't put any other systems in place so far for that. I was considering like an electric wire and all that sort of thing, but everything had a drawback with it, unfortunately. So, um, like I say, obviously I don't want to lose any fish, but they're not super expensive koi at the moment. So, um, so far, so good. One of the other things that I didn't really expect to happen uh, was to have to deal with um, with cleaning the windows. Obviously, I knew I was going to clean the inside of the windows, uh, and that's relatively easy. I use a, uh, a algae magnet scraper, uh, a DD blade runner specifically, uh, and that seems to work pretty well. Although uh, it would be a lot better if it floated because it has fallen off a few times and I've had to use tongs to get it out of the pond. Um, so, but it works through thick glass though. Uh, I've got 25.5 millimeter windows on this pond and it seems to hold okay. Uh, so that's really useful for getting any algae off the inside of the windows. Um, really quick and easy to do. Although I do know a lot of people use brushes, stiff brushes to do it as well. Um, the outside of the windows takes probably more work than the inside to be totally honest. Um, and I get, because I've got quite hard water in this area, um, my uh, pH is sort of 8.5 to 9. Um, my KH is, uh, I think it's up at about 13 or 14. And my GH is also really high. Um, I get, um, when the water evaporates out of the pond, it leaves behind like white, white fill on the inside top of the windows. It's obviously lime scale. Uh, so I believe 
and that's quite hard to get off the algae scraper doesn't get it off um, I think using white vinegar is probably the the best way to do it but it's not something that you know I come out and do every you know three days it's probably something that I couldn't be bothered doing until I needed to shoot the pond or something like that so it's just a bit of a pain I could potentially try and soften the water in the pond um, by adding rainwater possibly but that comes with its own drawbacks um, so that's not something that I've uh, sort of got around so far in terms of the uh, the other systems like the uh, the surface skimmer uh, I've got a Cockney Koi wide mouth surface skimmer that works fine yeah yeah perfect uh, powered by a Sichi SDC 9.0 pump uh, works really well I can adjust the flow um, adjust the uh, the suction rate and uh, it keeps the surface really nice and clear it, it really even on a really low power setting uh, the one thing I do notice though is when I've got my um, air diffuser bottom drain air supply running uh, those bubbles push water to the end where the skimmer opposite the skimmer so that doesn't get skimmed that portion of the water and a simple solution to that would be to put the air pump that is running the bottom drain on a timer so it turns off for like even if it's 15 minutes in the morning 15 minutes at night and that would allow all of the water to get drawn into the uh, skimmer chamber so that's something that I'm planning on adding fairly soon probably put a smart plug in um, or something like that the bottom drain seems to be working fine um, I have had a couple of times where I've been getting larger bubbles that are leaking out of the edge of the, um, the diffuser dome and um, I think that is because it's getting blocked up by algae growth the the tiny pores on the top of the um, the diffuser dome so what I've used is a long pool brush um, to just brush that from from the top and that has solved the problem and it's gone back to the uh, nice fine bubbles um, I've had to do that a couple of times in the last couple of months so um, so that's something to bear in mind a possible maintenance task you may need to do if you get an aerated bottom drain so the filter system um, again seems to be working fine um, and I suppose the ultimate test of that is the uh, water quality uh, and I have been doing tests um, recent most recent tests I did a couple of days ago um, and my ammonia is fine it's in safe levels um, it's coming up yellow on the uh, NT Labs pond kit um, the uh, nitrite also well, that's undetectable, absolutely no colour in that test. Um, I'll chuck in a few images here. Um, and the uh, nitrate test as well is really low level, virtually undetectable, no, no colour in the sample, even after the amount of time you need to leave it for. So that's not too bad either. The filtration system that I've got, just to quickly explain, is uh, an easy pod um, running off a three inch aerated bottom drain. Um, goes up into the easy pod and then it goes into a DIY moving bed filter that I made um, it's not a not particularly big moving bed filter it's just sort of a, a round um, trough that I bought online um, and I've used an assembly of like elbows that go from the easy pod and link into that uh, via a uniseal um, and so the water like passively flows into the mixed bed um, and then I have got a an EA Vary pump 10k uh, and that pulls water out of the mixed bed uh, through a um, via a perforated length of 1.5 inch pressure pipe so it sucks it through that into the pump and then it goes into a TMC Ultima 30 watt UV and then it goes back along the pipe back along the back of the pond and in through the rear of the pond wall. I've added some media to the moving bed since the last video 
and uh, after doing quite a bit of research I decided to use the K Plus media from Evolution, Evolution Aqua um, and yeah I've been really happy with it. Floats which is really important and I'll get onto that in a moment um, and I'm slowly adding um, amounts to the moving bed. Uh, one thing I have done, I've got it in a net mesh bag uh, to keep it all contained because I found and, and this is where the floating comes in um, when, when I brushed the top of the bottom drain it led to quite a lot of uh, particles in the water so what I decided to do was to put some filter floss wrap it around that perforated pipe that the um, uh, that the water gets sucked through as it comes out of the moving bed but at that time I had my media um, floating around in there freely and I managed to get media sucked through the pipe because I left the end cap of the pipe off stupidly um, and that got into the pump um, and unbeknownst to me it also made it through the pump and into the pond and we'll get onto that in a second so long story short I got it all out of the pump um, got it back into the moving bed filter um, put the end cap on wrapped the foam around um, but it was such a pain in the neck that I just I need to contain the media uh, so I don't have that every time because it gets stuck to the perforated pipe as well uh, which is a slight problem so it doesn't do that in the mesh bag though so I've got it in the mesh bag with air stones in the mesh bag it's all contained um, and the, the through flow of the mixed bed I think is enough um, for it to, to not be a major problem in terms of the filtration capability um, and being able to get all of those fines out of the water as well I think is probably a bigger benefit so um, but anyway going back to the uh, the media that made it into the pond um, I didn't actually notice this because the um, surface skimmer was so effective that it sucked it all in really quick um, and I only noticed it when I, I turned off the surface skimmer to do some maintenance and I, I don't know if anyone experiences this but when I do that the basket of the surface skimmer always like pops out and turns upside down I guess just because of the sort of backflow that results from turning off the pump um, and that meant that all of the K1 that had got into the skimmer basket was now freely floating around underneath the cover so I then turned the skimmer pump back on and all of that media got sucked into the skimmer pump then so I had to dismantle that get it all out and um, retrieve it all and luckily because it floats I was it wasn't too much of a a chore to do that well it would have been worse if it was sunk to the bottom that would have been a complete nightmare so it didn't take too long to gather it all up put it back into the moving bed and um, in now in the mesh bag and now it's all contained and that but it, it is can be quite difficult to deal with um, media when it's floating around like that obviously in the easy pod it's all contained um, and yeah the easy pod is an absolute dream um, I give it a, a backwash every week or so um, and flush my bottom drain as well. Um, never seem to see much debris coming up when I flush the bottom drain. Um, and I'll be totally honest, that is how all the water changes that I'm doing. I then just top the pond back up with tap water, add a bit of dechlorinator um, and, uh, and there we go. Um, but like I say, even doing that, the um, pollutant levels if you'd like to call it that seem to be under control um, having said that I have been pr having a problem with my fish um, and this is the sort of main area that I want to talk about really um, so a few weeks after I did the first video I started getting ulcers on the comets Sarasa comets that I added um, I added four and four shabunkins and a couple of tench um, and I originally thought it was just um, a result of spawning behavior because they did start chasing 
quite soon after I added them, uh, when the water temperatures started to rise, um, I thought, okay, well, it's probably just a physical injury, it's going to recover. Unfortunately, it didn't though, and it did progress quite rapidly. Um, and um, I came out and a couple of the fish were just like floating around listlessly at the bottom, obviously something really wrong with them. Nasty wounds on the side. Um, also, one of them had a bit of mouth fungus. Um, so I managed to net them um, and I treated them. Um, but sadly, I lost one of them straight away after I treated it. It just, I put it back in the pond um, in the stream of the, um, the bubbles, air bubbles, not right directly in it, near it. So it was getting air going over its gills and that to recover, but it just literally floated up to the top and um, lasted a few more minutes and then died. The other one um, seemed to recover okay, but the ulcer never improved at all. And that one died a few days later. Um, yeah, it was a really bad ulcer. Uh, lost a third one in a similar way and as it stands the one that I've got left has also got ulcers on its side exactly the same as all the others um, and that one was like really healthy it grown so much um, it was lit it's probably about twice as big as it was since I added it um, and the shabunkins didn't seem to be affected by it at all and, until quite recently and now they've got them as well uh, these like erosions on their sides like, other than that they don't look too bad really um, the tench seem fine they don't seem to have a mark on them they seem to be growing okay um, I added three uh, Japanese weather loach um, several weeks ago uh, they seem fine as well um, and the ulcers did start before I added those so it's not something that I've introduced to the pond I'm pretty sure um, so I'm a bit stumped by it really um, and about 10 days ago I did add a treatment to the pond um, an NT labs treatment uh, I think it's an acroflavin based treatment um, so I added the, the right dose um, to the pond for that and, and as a result the pond has got a slightly sort of green tinge at the moment um, I turned my UV off as well for this period because I believe that can interfere with some medications and obviously made sure the oxygen levels are, are really good and I did leave it actually till um, the water temperatures dropped a little bit from um, they got up to about 26 degrees C in the uh, heat wave that we had uh, around about July but they've dropped back down and they're fairly stable now at around 19 or 20 and I'm finding that sort of overnight I'd get a drop of about one degree Celsius um, so I don't think that that is a massive swing so um, I think like the, the conditions in the pond are quite stable the water seems clear and clean um, so I'm kind of stumped about why they're getting these ulcers really because I read that it's bad bacteria that is involved like Aeromonas bacteria um, and like I say I just I don't know there's no dead spots in the pond there's not loads of detritus anywhere rotting away so um, so fingers crossed I'm just hoping that this treatment sorts it out um, I'm loath to catch them because I think that'll just cause a load more stress really um, but I might do that and give them a salt bath uh, because I read that that sort of cleans the wound out um, and like has a prophylactic effect and I suppose last thing to talk about just quickly because I've started doing a um, a series of in its own right about this is the living wall uh, and yeah you can see it's grown a lot since the last update um, I've added a few more plants and the existing ones have started to fill out a bit so uh, if you're interested in how I built that and how it's going like I say uh, check out my other videos and uh, I've started a series um, keeping up to date with that. I'll do another one soon as well. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens as we start getting into autumn and winter, uh, seeing how it does. Um, so yeah, like I say, check that one out too. So that's it for this instalment folks. Like I say, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you made it to the end of the video, thanks for uh, persevering and listening to all the, the, the ramble. Um, I hope this 
proves useful if you're setting up your own pond, if you're currently running a pond, um, if you've encountered any of the issues that I have, come up with any solutions and let me know because I'd be really interested to hear that. Um, and I'm aiming to do another update as we uh, move into winter, uh, planning on building a cover for the pond and got a few other projects on the go, possibly start on a bog filter as well over the winter. So uh, if you haven't already subscribed, uh, consider clicking on that old button. Uh, give me a thumbs up as well if you like the video and uh, I'll see you next time.